So there's several ways that we can use to create a Git repository. But before creating one, it is highly recommended that you configure the author name and email address. Now it's not essential, but it is important enough that I'm going to outline how to do that in the next video. For now though, let's actually talk about creating Git repositories and the three main methods to do just that. So the first method, in method one, is from scratch. By executing the git init command in an empty folder, this, which will become the root folder of our repository, this will, very unsurprisingly, create a blank repository, which later on we can then use and add new artifacts to. Method two is uh, creating a repository from an existing project. Now, for an existing project folder with related files and directories, we use the git init command to create the repository. So in this scenario, the project artifacts will be brought under git version control. And the third method, method three, is cloning a remote repository. So in this method, we can clone a remote repository from a remote server. Now, for example, we could uh, clone a repository from GitHub to your local machine. Now, GitHub is uh, arguably the most popular web-based Git repository hosting service in the world. And we'll be actually using that uh, later in the course. And we will see how all three methods work in future videos. For now, though, let's actually have a bit of a play with Git from the command line to look at the absolute basics. And we're going to start with the command line usage of Git, but uh, we'll progress to GUI tools for Git usage a little bit later. All right, so on a Windows machine, this is how you start the shell. To start the uh, Git bash shell from Windows, we just uh, start, uh, go to the Windows start button, and we can either uh, look for it here, if we've got an icon added uh, there, we can look at uh, starting it that way, or I can scroll down to G, the app starting with G, and I can start git bash that way. What I'm going to do for the first time, I'm going to pin it to the start. So I could have started git bash from there, or now that I've actually pinned it to the start, I've added a shortcut effectively, I can start it that way. Either way, start the git bash shell. Once you've done that, we're good to go, and uh, let's continue on. And on a Linux machine, this is how you start the shell. So all we need to do is come over here and uh, click on this button and we can just click on terminal here, or if that wasn't showing up for some reason, we could just type the first few letters enough until terminal comes up. And just click on terminal, and uh, at this point we're now ready to use the terminal and uh, to issue some git commands. And because I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna start the show with command space and type terminal. Or T-E-R-M, enough so that the terminal pops up, press enter, and I've got my terminal session loaded now. So from this point on, the commands that you're seeing here should work on Windows, Mac, or Linux. All right, so to start off with, very basic usage of Git, we can type in Git, G-I-T space, help. And unsurprisingly, it gives us a little bit of help on the various commands that uh, Git actually uses. Now we can also use a Git, or type in Git space help space dash A, and that gives us just the available Git commands, a little bit more detail there. And if we want to find out more, perhaps to have a look at some of the different concept guides that are included with Git, we can type in Git. I'll just clear the screen. Type in clear. And we can type Git help minus G. We get a list of the various guides there. And if we want to see a specific guide, we can actually type Git help. And for example, tutorial, one of the uh, guides there. And that loads up the tutorial, and we can navigate by using the arrow keys, up and down, paged up, page down. And down the bottom, I can press the Q letter, letter Q, to quit out of the help. And to look for a specific command help, git space help space init, would give us the information that's specific about the init command, and we'll be using that in a future video. And again, Q to quit. And finally, we can type git help glossary, to give us a bit of a glossary of what's included with uh, Git. It can be useful just to read up on what some of the uh, terms mean. So it may certainly be worth you looking through that once. All right, so that's the end of this video. In the next one, we're going to start uh, doing something useful with Git, and we're going to configure the name and the email address that we're going to be using with Git. So see you in the next video.